At times, we have a tendency to completely overlook Nubian history after the fall of the great Meroitic civilization. There may be good reasons for this, but I think there's a lot more to discover during this time period. So today, hopefully, I can shed more light into the topic of medieval Nubia. <laughs> What up African world, it's home team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and supporting this content. If you'd like access to full courses and sources, or you simply want to show your support, you may do so by clicking the Patreon link in the description box below. Medieval Nubia possesses some of the most underestimated civilizations in Africa and also the most glossed over. Very few people get detailed when discussing this time period. To be fair, the glory days of Nubia were certainly in the ancient past, but medieval Nubia still has a lot to offer. After the fall of Meroitic civilization, three Christian kingdoms began to flourish, Nobatia, Makuria, and Elodia, with Makuria perhaps being the most powerful. All these Nubian kingdoms were Christian states in a Muslim-dominated North Africa. Despite being largely isolated, religiously speaking, Christian Nubia still managed to make its presence known. Nubian pottery from this period made its way far to the west of the Nile Valley in the modern country of Chad. This discovery speaks to the extent of influence medieval Nubia had in other parts of Africa. Surprisingly, however, even though Christians existed in Ethiopia, there seems to have been little to no contact between the two, which is certainly odd. However, at the same time, we have to be cautious because there is so much more to learn about this region during this moment in history. As mentioned previously, the Nubian kingdoms along the Nile Valley were Christians, and most studies about them have focused largely on the religious Nubian community. The churches and art throughout the region speak volumes as to the nature of Nubian life and their connection with the outside world. Arab writers paint us a picture of the military might, as the Nubians had several successful invasions of Egypt, even resulting in the capture of Cairo in 745 and the occupation of Upper Egypt for much of the 10th century, and were frequently made aware through Arab accounts about Nubian resistance over many centuries to Arab armies beginning around 641. Nubian warriors were highly skilled and received a world-renowned reputation, especially their archers. Aside from these historical notes, we know little about daily Nubian life or about the structure of their kingdoms. The three Christian kingdoms in Nubia can be seen to have existed by the beginning of the 7th century. Two of them, notably Nobatia and Makuria, joined together early in the 8th century, perhaps spearheaded by King Makurios. The Arabs constantly sought to position themselves to advance Islam. Their strategy seemed to be diverse, as direct military invasion was just not sustainable as they were frequently met with successful Nubian resistance. For some time, peaceful coexistence and intermarriage played a role as Islam was present in Nubia by the early 10th century. The art from medieval Nubia during this time is remarkable. The Nubians made distinct pottery that not only displayed their vibrant culture, but revealed the contact they had with the rest of the world. The old capital of Nobatia, called Faras, provided evidence of an advanced culture and political structure. Faris possessed a highly developed church organization wealthy enough to produce a cathedral that is well built, just as impressive as anything outside of the continent. Faris also housed a highly skilled artistic tradition in painting as well as ceramic art. In 1961 through 1964, the University of Ghana excavated and examined a domestic site from medieval Nubia. At the site was found a small town with associated churches and cemetery, as well as a number of other large isolated buildings spread along the riverbank. The main site consisted of several elaborate complex buildings. From this discovery, scholars were able to come up with a very good picture of medieval Nubian domestic life and architecture. The buildings were all of sun-dried brick, which made sense in that climate. One aspect of Christian Nubian art is the existence of the Queen Mother painting. The mother is identified with writing in Greek that says, Martha, Mother of the King. This is important because it indicates that the Nubians still adhere to or at least honored their traditional matrilineal system. According to some scholars, 
This may have been passed down to Christian Nubia via ancient Kush, as queen mothers were of great importance in Meroitic times. Another aspect of medieval Nubian civilization that is often overlooked is the fact that it was a literate society and that its language was one of the first ones to be written down on the continent, even though an even older one existed known as Meroitic. However, actual texts within medieval Nubia are very few and most are of a religious nature with some legal documents. There are some hints that the Nubians from this period had contacts with Persia and Syria but this is not actually unique concerning the history of the region because Nubian mercenaries did serve in other armies outside of Africa since ancient times. However, one of the most underestimated aspects of medieval Nubia are their battles with the Arabs. Not only did the existence of Christian Nubia impose a barrier to the expansion of Islam, but Dongola, the capital itself, became a site that was an important force in Nile Valley politics. All in all, medieval Nubia must be viewed through the lens of a highly developed civilization with considerable urban development on par with any in the known world at the time. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey. Hey, hey.